This morning, we're going to chat about something that is going on in the market because you've heard me talk about for months now, all the way back since last September, you've heard me talk about the fact that interest rates are going to continue to come down or they should be, long-term interest rates should come down because CPI, which is the, you know, the consumer price index, which shows inflation, that number continues to drop. And as that number continues to drop, we will see long-term interest rates drop. Now, that, and that's true, and it is happening, and it's going to continue to happen, and we're going to have more of it. We're going to see rates come down quite a bit more, but it doesn't mean it's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. On a day-to-day -day basis, it is so impossible to predict what is going to happen. I don't care what economist is out there. There's no way they could do it. Here's a perfect example. And I'm going to talk about something called the Personal Consumption Price Index, CPE. I, all these acronyms, they drive me crazy. Um, but the PCE is something that kind of gives us an indication of what's going to happen with CPI. So we'll talk about that, okay? Now, but here's why it's so difficult to predict what's going to go on. So last week, Thursday and Friday, we had a very good day, two very good days, in long-term pricing for mortgages. They didn't drop a lot, but they came down. We saw the T-bill drop into the um, 1.03 area, or excuse me, 3.03 area. We haven't been down that low in quite some time. So this morning, I get up and I go and I click on the, the watch for the yield. The yield's up over 3.5, and I'm thinking, what the heck? How do you go from 3.3 to 3.5 I mean, literally, from Friday, market closed, and the market hadn't even opened yet this morning, and we're already at 3.5. I'm thinking, what the world's going on? So I slide down to get a... So this is why you just can't predict things. Over the weekend, the nations in the Middle East that control the oil, they decided that they are going to cut back on oil production. So... How much they're going to cut back, we don't know. How long they're going to cut back, we don't know. What's their reasoning, we don't know. But we know that they've said they're going to cut back on oil production. Well, obviously, if they cut back on oil production, that's going to raise energy costs here. If that raises energy costs here, that sends some fear into the market. So this morning, we don't have the 10-year Treasury tracking like it did at the end of last week. Now, who could have predicted that? Chris, you could have predicted it. You're the man. You're the man. It's goofy. It's goofy. So when I say that, because that's what's going on on short-term things. So no matter what we see long-term, short-term, anything can happen. Now, maybe this week, today, later this week, you know, the, the nations, you know, the oil nations, they're going, maybe they'll come back and say, well, this is how much we're going to cut back. And then somebody will come out with a statement and say that's going to have an impact, it's not going to have an impact, and the market will do whatever it's going to do. Now, that's short-term stuff. That's not typically long-term. That's short-term. But it affects your buyers and your sellers who are taking and trying to get a loan today. Because if they want to get locked into an interest rate on a day-to-day -day basis, the lender doesn't know if it's going to go up or go down, so just lock that sucker. Get it done. All right? That's what I try to advise most people. But let's take a look at what is happening on longer-term information. And write this down. P-C-E stands for Personal Consumption Price index. So this is not a measure of inflation. This is a measure of buying habits and savings levels that you and I have. So that's used by both the government and business to kind of project what is going What's going to happen? How should we plan going forward? And it also gives us an indication of, okay, 
based on how much we're going to, we as consumers are thinking we're going to spend or save, that could have an impact on overall inflation. So now this you don't have to write down, but you want to see both CPE or CP, yeah, CP, <laughs> PC, personal consumption price index. Okay, we want to see that move down along with CPI moving down as, as both. So the personal consumption price index, catch these numbers, 5.7 in November, 5.3 in December. Now, last month, when, that, when this number came out, when the PCE came out last month, all of a sudden, we saw interest rates blip back up because January was 5.3, same as December. And I think I made a comment during one of the Connect sessions that the reason that it, went, that it didn't go down is because we decided as consumers, we're going to go out and start spending a whole bunch of money. And in January, we bought more cars than, we, than anybody expected. And as a result of that, we saw that number remain flat. Well, the February number came out last week. That's what gave us a good Thursday and Friday in the market. It came in at 5.0. That's a big drop. Yes, ma'am. Can you explain what that is um, and why it wants to go down? It's people are spending more, so it does what to what? What's it comparing? The price, OK. This number, the personal consumption price index, that is a function of our buying habits and our savings levels. So uh, how they determine that, I don't have that info. I don't know how they determine it. They probably got some crazy algorithms based on phone calls, based on numbers that are coming in from businesses, I'm guessing. I don't know how they completely calculate it. But based on our buying habits. So as it goes down, people are spending and saving more? If, they, more saving. if they're going down, that means we're spending less and very light, potentially saving more. And that's what's happening now because remember, inflation's coming down. So as inflation's coming down, we hopefully are able to save a little bit more. So if, if we can bring down our spending habits a little bit, we don't want to bring them down too far. We got to be careful because that's what grows the economy. So we don't want that number to go down because if it goes down too low, then the economy shuts down. But at the same time, we're trying to bring some control into inflation. But that number right now drives what we're going to see in inflation. If we just keep spending, 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 guess what? Demand is high. Demand is high. Guess what's going to happen to prices? They're going to go up. We don't want them to go up right now. We want to bring it down. I read an article over the weekend that said somebody, I do not predict this, but some quote unquote genius, economic genius, predicted that we are going to see 2% inflation by the end of the summer. Now, I don't believe we're going to get down that low by summer. I do believe if we keep doing things the way we're doing them, we're probably going to get down to that 2% number, hopefully sometime in 2024, hopefully. But I don't see it by end of summer. If it did happen by the end of summer, folks, just don't even think about a vacation. Because interest rates are going to get down so low, you and I are going to be so busy because it's going to be another crazy market. So, I mean, which is, um, Joanne's not, yeah, 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 I'm ready for that. <laughs> well, we want it, we, you know, I, I want it busy too, don't get me wrong. But, you know, we want it busy at a point that's not going to be, you know, put a house on the market on Friday, uh, open house, you know, have 50 people go through it and 10 contracts. For those of you who lived through that in 2020, 2021, the beginning part of 2022, that was not necessarily fun. I mean, oh, how frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. And then people gave up a lot of things they're not having to give up now to get the house. Right. So 
you know, it, it's one of those things where you want, you want a good situation, you want a strong economy, you, we want to have a great housing market, we want favorable interest rates, all of those things we want. And what I think is that if we can get there in a modest fashion, by it just moving like it has been these last few months, as opposed to some huge drop, and then all of a sudden we, it just goes crazy again. Um, you know, so anyway, I'm bringing this up because there's a, there's a lot of talk right now on what to expect with interest rates. I will stand on what I've been saying since October. Interest rates are going to continue to come down. And I think by the end of this year, beginning of 2024, we're going to have very favorable interest rates. Someone said, Greg, how favorable? Well, there will be a five in front of that, in front of interest rates. Is it possible there could be a four in front of the interest rate? Yes. I don't think that'll happen until maybe next, maybe next year, but I do think it's going to. There are people predicting it'll happen before then. That's fine. Um, I'm kind of thinking, okay, if it happens in 2024, that's nothing wrong with that. You know, again, it's kind of like, do I want my house price to go up? Of course, we all want our houses to go up in value. But do I want it to go up at 15 or 20% a year? No, thank you, Chris. Absolutely not. You know, one of the beauties of Atlanta is for all the years I've lived here, we've usually gone up somewhere between 3 to 6%, kind of a modest number, which kept us much more attractive. And then we had 20 and 21 and beginning of 22. And now it's amazing. I talk to people, you talk to them all the time. They want to buy a house. And they, for whatever reason, the magic number I hear so frequently is $250,000. They want to buy a house for $250,000. And, and then I ask them where. And, <laughs> and oh my Lord. You know, so it's so difficult. Can they afford a $250,000 house? Yes. Can they find a $250,000 house? You're all shaking your heads. No. It's so difficult. Now, there are some $250,000 homes out there that are actually pretty nice houses. But they're an hour from Atlanta or more without traffic. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can go west. I mean, Rock Mart. Or you can't go east because then you run into. Yeah, you can't go east because now you're running into Athens, and but you know the the whole area between Atlanta and Athens is now just become like one big suburb anyway. But you can but you can go west. I mean, you can go west of Dallas into Rock Mart. Um, there's some areas over there, and I know you shake your head, but you know there's some pretty nice homes over there. So you can find things. But again, depending where you're working, depending if you have to commute, that's not exactly where you were thinking that you'd be. All right? So, you know, it's just that's what's going on. So all of the, all this data becomes critical for you and I to become, as we've been talking about, or you hear it from Mike all the time, we have to be the trusted advisor. We have to be the confidant. We have to be the person they want to come to to gather information. And so what I would encourage, just get familiar with some of this. It's not like you and I have to predict it and know it. We just want to be, we just want people to say, hey, I know that you're on top of it. Chris, I love watching your videos. One of the reasons why is because every time I watch the video, you don't try to predict anything, but you come across with a lot of confidence and you're providing information I can tell you they don't know. And it's not like it has to be, it has to be exact. What you're doing is you're giving them information they don't know and its potential impact, and I think it's excellent. And I would encourage everybody to keep doing those kind of things. The more that we can be the trusted expert, the greater chance we have of kind of locking in that customer. Okay? Now, I'm going to break. Uh, we're going to stop, but I want I got one more thing to go over. But first of all, any questions? Okay. If not, just one other thing that we are facing right now 
and Eric has faced it, and several others have faced it. You know, we find buyers that have got unrealistic expectations of us. It's very difficult sometimes because they, they come to us with requests that are almost impossible. And when that happens, you know, you and I, it's tough. We don't, depending on how much business we got sitting on our plate, we don't want to turn anything away. But at the same time, sometimes just complete transparency with the prospect, not turning them away, but just total transparency with the prospect will just either they will move or they'll move closer and listen. And that becomes critical. That's why this kind of thing is so important. When people start asking things of us that we cannot do, we just can't pull a rabbit out of the hat. I mean, Jay and I were chatting this morning on a client that him and I worked on a year ago. I mean, they want to buy a $250,000 house in Kennesaw. Lord help me. You know, you might be able to, you might be able to find a lot with a house on it that you can tear down, maybe. I mean, it's just tough. So how do we set realistic expectations? And I am one who believes total transparency. It's not always that we have to tell them what they want to hear. We tell them what it is in a nice and as friendly a manner as we possibly can. And if they can't accept that, then they need to go work with someone else. And when you get to be my age, you'll say, well, Greg, if I were your age, I could probably do that. Yes. It's not easy for me either, and I don't want to turn anybody away. But when you ask crazy things, when an investor says to me, Greg, I just got to have a 6.5% interest rate, and I don't want to pay any discount points, i okay. And they say, well, do you have that? I said, absolutely not. <laughs> How close can you get? Not even remotely. <laughs> not even remotely. But Greg, what am I supposed to do? I guess you could spend the next three days on the phone calling up people and seeing if anybody can give that to you without lying. Because it doesn't exist. So that transparency becomes real important. So understanding what we've got in terms of information and transparency is what we need to keep this thing moving forward. You are going to be busy this year. Trust me. All right? Good. Thanks.